We're going to do an update on Army Hammer. He's checking into rehab as he faces disturbing accusations from several women. I heard about this story when it first came out, like in passing, and I didn't pay any attention to it. And I'll have to admit, because I didn't know who Army Hammer was. Stories of drug-fueled days and nights and sexual fantasies turn violent. But this isn't a Hollywood script. It was allegedly Army Hammer's life last year. Now the disgraced actor is reportedly getting help and trying to regain control of his life. Well, as the thumbnail says, rich boys always be in trouble. And this is one of those cases. He pulled the greatest move of any rich person who gets in trouble for doing something. And a month ago, he checked himself into rehab. You know Army Hammer from movies like Call Me By Your Name, The Social Network, and The Lone Ranger. But now the Hollywood actor is making headlines as he faces allegations of emotional abuse, violent fantasies, and even cannibalistic desires. And then I was talking to my sister, and she said, have you ever gone down the Army Hammer wormhole and she sent me a link to this subreddit. And y'all, Kim, how crazy was the subreddit? It was a rabbit hole. There's the camp that believes that Army Hammer is innocent. There's the camp that wants to, like, burn him at the stake. Um, it's crazy. I mean, he comes from a long line of, of bad guys, to be honest. I want to get into his backstory just a little bit. I read this Vanity Fair article about him and I think, and this isn't, first of all, this does not excuse anything that this man has done, nor does it explain it in any way, but I want you all to know what kind of money this guy comes from and also that his entire family, um, yeah, they're all bad. So, you know, he definitely is one of those guys that's kicking back um, with his riches and thinking like, I can do whatever I want and no one's going to be able to touch me. So he comes from a long line of rich people. He, his like great grandfather, Julius Hammer, was a Russian doctor um, that came to the United States to, and had direct ties to Stalin. Like, that was weird, I thought. And got into trouble for things that I'm not going to talk about on our channel. But you can look it up. So, he was a doctor. And his son, Armand Hammer, ended up taking over the family business is said to, was said when he died to be worth about 180 million dollars. Armand Hammer is known for hobnobbing with politicians like um you know past presidents you can name several. Um he's got ties to the Watergate scandal. Um he's got ties to paying people off for there was uh, like different scandals that happened in his home, um, different like um, crimes that happened where like money laundering things like that. Like he was just one of those guys that you throw money at it and it in hush hush and make it go away. Isn't that what you think though? Anytime you read, like I read multiple times about different times throughout the years as in his life of him living at the Cay you know, in the Cayman Islands, like as a child, as an adult, his family, like that's always so weird to me because as soon as I hear somebody say that they're even visiting the Cayman I Islands, my first thought is like, are you like laundering money or something? Yep. That, or is that, that just where my brain goes? Yeah. It's like they would go there whenever, or when granddaddy was in trouble. So um, the grandfather had so Armand's father was also named Julius like yeah they all have the same like three names and Julius Armand and then there was like a Michael in there somewhere and it just goes like a, a generation after generation 
We know um, who the least favorite child was. I'm just saying, Michael. Yeah, Michael was the least favorite child, by the way, Army's dad, who apparently shot a guy in their house. Just to watch him die? No, it was over a gambling debt. And Armand, granddad, paid $50,000 to get him off for it. Like, this is what these people are like. So Armand had a mistress that he re he made her change her name. He paid for her entire life, had her followed, did all kinds of different things um, to keep her under his thumb for all of these years and said that he would take care of her once he passed away, left her out of the will. She got nothing. Um, and, and like his wife, Armand's grandma or Army's grandmother knew about this woman. It's just so strange. And this, this money, it's like money is the root of all evil. I believe it in this family. This is what these people are known for. They've even, been known to hire ghost writers to write like biographies about the family that make that paint them in a better light so that they don't look as evil as they are so this guy comes by it honestly apparently <laughs> like his whole family's like this they come from this line of russian doctors tied to stalin back and forth from russia to the united states all through the early 1900s well, it, several different wives by Julius, the great grandfather and Armand, the grandfather. He then marries this woman um, who has a ton of money and he invests her money into Occidental oil. And that is where all the money came from because they still own it. And he made it very profitable. And that's where he got all of his money. But um, to this day, to this day, there are um, like court hearings and battles over the $180 million fortune because the will was just jacked up. Um, he left, he didn't, I think he left um, his son, Michael, like $250,000 of the $180 million. <laughs> So it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, you couldn't make this up. It's an actual movie that you would watch um, about a crime family. And this is this guy's real life. And now he, here he is, everybody looking at him in the media. Like he's so perfect, a rich, perfect square jawline actor, all this money. And really, I mean, his whole family is disgusting and corrupt and he's a cannibal apparently. So there you have it. Army hammer. We're going to link this subreddit. Cause I'm assuming they want people to know about this asshole since they made a subreddit for him. I'm not going to clasp it. Clasp it. I'm going to link to the subreddit down and below because they really, they went, they even have things in order and they have it listed as to what you're going to be looking at. They have voice memos where he used NDAs to try and, you know, bully people into being quiet about it. Disturbing screenshots were leaked by an anonymous social media account where he allegedly tells a woman that he's 100% accountable. So House of Effie is the Instagram account for, if I have this right, Kim, I don't know if I may have misread, it's one of the exes of Army Hammer, it's Instagram account, or it's the Instagram account that was leaking the messages of Army Hammer's exes. This is a deep-rooted primal thing. I wanted to literally eat you, like consume you. I swear to God, this it is dangerous and can make you a cannibal serial killer. Ha ha. I mean, I am totally and so deeply satiated and not even horny right now, but when it comes back, I'm scared. I took a few bites where I had to stop myself. I got totally lost in just biting you. I didn't know where I was or what year it was. I was so lost in this crazy light. Like the entire universe just became my teeth on your skin. I was going to bite a piece of you off, it felt like. And if I did it, I knew I would want to do it again. 
I felt like an actual animal. I could have killed you. It was so intense. I am 100% a cannibal. I want to eat you. That's scary to admit. I've cut the heart out of a living animal before and eaten it while still warm. If Hannibal Lecter had Snapchat, yes. There's several women who apparently he's been involved with that have come out against him to say that he abused them in different ways and that he manipulated them into thinking that they were in a BDSM relationship with him. Like think 50 shades of gray because this guy is super handsome, rich guy, oil tycoon air. And he's into this BDSM mess. He says, and all these different women have said, well, that's what we thought we were getting into. And turns out it's way more than that. So on one of these high protocol nights, I was tied up and he basically looked over my body and said to me, uh, where should I put my initials on you? And I didn't really say anything. And then he just started to carve his initial into me. And I just didn't say anything, um, which is a complicated part of this. You know, I was just always wanting to please him. And I never wanted to say no. I was, I was in a weak position. He was in a position of power. Um, he knew how uncomfortable it made me, but I just never said no. And I think that kind of being coerced into things, just, and we don't want to say no, and we don't want to be undesirable. And I think it's, it's consent, consent is much more complicated than we think. And I've learned that through this. And I'm trying to kind of spread that message and, and educate, um, especially about these uh, non-formative sexual practices, because it's, you know, as a vanilla person, and vanilla means that I am someone who is not regularly engaging in these um, non-formative sexual practices. I don't know much about this world. And, and the more research that I've done, the more I found that these things that he did are actually not BDSM, that he's calling them BDSM, but it's actually just unsafe um, behavior that would, you know, normally be criminal. Um, yeah. So it's, it's scary. Again, we're back to branding here because he branded. All the great guys are branders, don't oh. you know? locations like he wanted to eat my ribs he wanted to find a doctor in los angeles to remove my ribs just eat them to smoke them he has a smoker at his house um he's obsessed with meat so he basically told me that he wanted to, to me to remove my ribs so he could eat it and he always said i wonder i wondered how it tasted and he like would think it would taste good and stuff like that so gross one of these exes said that he had a, like a whole ass kit that he walked around with what did army keep in this kit this bdsm kit it was a leather suitcase and basically he carried safety pins shibari rope shibari is a type of japanese bondage style um knives you know uh, like a paddle there's a lot of the bdsm tools he would always travel with it um wherever he went you know, he did come out and say that all of this stuff is not true it didn't happen but you know the effie account came out anonymously so it wasn't someone who was trying to profit off of this story and shortly after sh the Effie account released some stuff, which I did find out it is by someone who said they had an affair with him for five years, like five or six other women contacted her with the same kinds of screenshots, similar stories. And that's when they were like, okay, no, this guy, this guy's the real deal. There's something wrong with him. And it was even like if they cut their finger while chopping vegetables, he would want to drink their blood. Like it's disgusting stuff. I just felt like he was so privileged and tone deaf to his own situation. The attorney has previously said that these assertions about Mr. Hammer are patently untrue. Uh, any interactions with this person or any partner of his were completely consensual and that they were fully discussed, agreed upon, and mutually participatory. What they're saying is we weren't really consenting to what he was doing because it was taking it above and beyond that. So they're just now learning this about themselves and they were and and it just, it's a very complicated story to tell. So, and it's kind of heartbreaking to listen to some of these women talk about their experience with him and super gross, just gross. It is you're passionate about it. You're risking everything because you, you want to help women who are suffering from abuse. What do you have to say to them? What, what, what has this experience taught you that everyone needs to know? You know, that I stand with you, like I'm validating you that you're not alone, that we need to learn how to say no as women. It's the best thing that we'll ever do for ourselves is to get, gain the self-esteem, the confidence to say no, um, that we're not here to please only men. You know, it, our needs matter, our mental health matters, and that, you know, these things will lead to trauma. And even if we don't see it immediately, whether in years or months, so take these things seriously. You know, take these situations seriously, find help, find support, talk to family and friends, have open conversations, whether you've gone through something like this or not. I think it's so important to have conversations about this stuff. 